Hello, and welcome to Breaking It All Down. I'm Count Zero. It's time to take a look at another one of the this year's Hugo Award nominees, this year being 2013, uh, Hugo Award nominees for Best Novel, specifically the book Throne of the Crescent Moon by Saladin Ahmed. But first, I need to talk a little bit about fantasy sex. Most medieval fantasy novels in the West are based around a European setting, that is, oddly enough, due to the societal background of the writers. Most writers of Western fantasy novels tend to be of a Western background. Occasionally, though, Western-style fantasy, by which I mean European-style knights and castles and that sort of thing, does occasionally show up in foreign media, particularly Japanese anime and manga, um, and also video games. Generally, though, most fantasy works reflect the background of their creator. For example... Wuxia films like Heaven and Hell, Five Deadly Venoms, and Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon were all based on Chinese historical fantasy novels or comic books, like, for example, the Condor Heroes series of books. Samurai fantasy works like Ninja Scroll are based off Japanese historical fantasy novels like the book series The Kuga Ninja Scrolls. There are occasional examples. The novel Bridge of Birds was based around a Chinese-style wuxia setting, but was written by an American writer. Also, with the U.S. and Canada being the melting pot they are culturally, we get writers of other cultures who bring their own background to the table, and thus whatever back, whatever well, fantastic or mythological elements that their culture has, and they add those to the mix and bring giving us something new and something great. As this work is going to involve characters of an ethnicity which isn't mine, I'm probably going to mispronounce the hell out of a lot of things. So, while yes, while I primarily experienced this book as an audiobook as opposed to reading the physical book, so theoretically I have heard the pronunciation and have them drubbed into me, so I should know them. I'm going to apologize in advance um, if I mess it up. So, with the book. The book follows Adullah Masud, uh, Maksud, a ghoul hunter in the city of Dan Soat. He's an old man in a field where there are very few old, old men still working in that field. And ghouls are undead things summoned by sorcerers who, from the bodies of dead people, of people who they've killed, or who are killed in the process of summoning the ghoul, and they're beings of intense physical strength and other and similar abilities, some of them magical, some of them just being just super strong and super durable because they're dead. So having survived to be an old man in this field is quite impressive on its own. However, he knows he doesn't have much time left in this field, and it's a young man's game. And so he's taken on a apprentice to be his potential successor, a, well, a dervish. Um, named Rasid Bas Rasid, to, again, hopefully be his successor in the future, but in the meantime, he's, tra he's basically training him in how to be a ghoul hunter. And over the course of the story, they, these characters end up uh, investigating the murder of the, fa of the family of one of Abdullah's old flames, or his biggest old flame. And over the course of this investigation, they end up uncovering a threat that is well, potentially could destroy the destroy the entire city. And so, uh, uh, Adula and his friends must use all the resources, all the connections, everything they have at their disposal in a desperate attempt to stop this menace from destroying the city. And so, it's good. I mean, it's a Hugo Award nominee. I mean, to be fair, there have been some Hugo Award nominees that I've reviewed that I didn't think were good. But it's a really, really good book. It is a good fantasy. It is a fantasy novel with a strong, really strong sense of adventure to it, with really, really well written characters. I'd actually say that Ahmed is better than Tolkien. Here's why. Tolkien he put Tolkien put a lot of work. I mean, massive loads of work into building his world. 
he, the world of Middle Earth is the most fleshed out world in all of fantasy that wasn't specifically created for the purposes of a tabletop role playing game. So, Robert Tolkien, while he's great with the world, his characters, not so much. I mean, with the exception of the Hobbits, and, yes, with the exception of the Hobbits, and to a certain degree, Aragorn, in the book, the characters aren't as fleshed out as they should be. Um, fleshed out as, as what I prefer in my fantasy characters. Well, Saladin creates created characters here which are vivid, excite, exciting, interesting, uh, who have motivations beyond the quest, um, who are fleshed out not just through their, not, not just through their actions and their thoughts, but also the, what, where they live, how they live. Uh, I mean, honestly, the, the, uh, I mentioned the Hobbits and Tolkien. The only characters in the Lord of the Rings which are fleshed out as well as Sally and Ahmed fleshes out, fleshes out all his primary characters are the Hobbits. Because the Hobbits we see not just who they are and what they do, but also how they lived. Or how they live. Um, there is a poem called The Things They Carried, which talks about um, kind of defining the people who fought in the Vietnam War, but showing what they were like what they are like, because it was written at the time the war is going on, based on what they carry. Not just in terms of weapons, but in terms of personal accoutrement, accoutrements. And Ahmed keep, I feel like Ahmed takes that to heart, and, and, and he and thinks, kept that poem in mind when writing this, in terms of who these characters are, are defined not just by what they do, what they do, but what they keep around them. Actually, there's a there's a basic writing exercise I've seen in several writing books, where it's take a character and de and describe their living space, describe where they are, what they live, what they do, uh, how they live, what stuff they keep around them. And the well, Sadama does that brilliantly. It is these characters are excellent. It is the best. Example of character development through description, not just of again, not just of, not just of them, but their stuff that I've seen. It is a perfect example of show don't tell in character building for these characters. The one complaint I have, though, actually kind of relates to some of the things that Tolkien got right. That, um, well, something not men doesn't quite. Is because Tolkien put as much work into the, um, into his world building, um, we don't have situations where we have characters disregarding an aspect of the setting for the purpose sake of conflict. He, Tolkien put setting first, so on the other hand, so it was less a case of disregarding the setting for the purposes of conflict as much as disregarding aspects of character for the purposes of setting. Um, and which is what hurt Tolkien's character building. Here, uh, well, I'm not getting too much into spoilers. This is a setting where there are horrific undead monsters, the ghouls. They are created by evil sorcerers who kill people in the purposes of, in the process of creating them and use the ghouls to kill more people. It's a society where there's a class of people trained with incredibly specific special skills for purposes of hunting down the ghouls and the people and the people who've created them. Further, magic is enough of a fact of life in this setting that kind of anyone can become a sorcerer, pretty much. It's a matter of intellectual ability as opposed to innate magical talent. And there are shops which sell the stuff you need to become a wizard. And there are magic users who will who are for hire. The king, the the um, I want to say sultan, sultan of uh, the oh, caliph, the caliph of Don Sawat has court sorcerers to protect him from magical threats. 
consequently, if a ghoul hunter tries to come to Khalif and says, there's a massive evil sorcerer planning to kill him and everyone in the court and seeking to claim the throne of the crescent moon to do horrible, nasty things to the world, that shouldn't be a Cassandra truth. That shouldn't be a situation of, oh, that's just a fairy story. We don't believe you. That could never happen. You're making this up. This is this is a load of hooey. That's not the response. The response is, okay, we understand, we are and, and we are enacting Plan J. Even if some random guy off the street comes to the Secret Service and says, oh, I have reason to, oh, somebody said they're going to try and kill the president. I mean, the Secret Service, they might not take it with the same credibility as if they through, as if the FBI comes to them and says, we have reason to believe a group's attempting to assassinate the president. But they won't just brush him off. They'll, like, they'll have somebody check it out. Because protecting the parents, their job, and yeah, I mean, other than that one complaint, well, the one situation where we have a Cassandra truth, where we shouldn't have a Cassandra truth, I enjoyed the book immensely, and I really got to give this my wholehearted recommendation, particularly if you're a fan of fantasy and you enjoy settings outside of the traditional Western fantasy setting. However, to this book, a little more fantasy, I wouldn't quite give this my, make it my primary pick for the Hugo Awards. There are also the World Fantasy Awards. I'd consider it more strongly for that. Um, but other than that, again, pick up this book. You won't regret it, unless you hate fantasy. In which case, you won't pick up this book in the first place, probably. Oh, we have two more books to go in this category. I'm currently reading Captain for Patrol's Alliance by Lewis McMa Lois McMaster Bluchold. And I also have Red Shirts by John Scalzi to go as well. Currently, Red Shirts I describe as being the favorite to win, as the book also won the Nebula Awards, but things could change. I mean, the Nebula Awards are a professional award, or professional association award, as opposed to the Hugos, which are a popular vote. Um, but honestly, this isn't about who's actually going to win. This is about who I want to win, because it's all about me. So, in any case, who my pick is will be a question for a future episode. Once I've gotten through the other two books. So, in the meantime, if you've enjoyed this show, please subscribe to this channel and give this video a thumbs up. And I will see you next time. Mm -hmm.